Imagine, at the dawn of time, Earth addressing her maker, the universe. I look up into the heavens. I look up into the sun. Whoever looks up with me must praise you. Whoever praises your majesty, you make him strong. You lend him fire. What is man? What is man that you spare him a thought? You have made him a little less than a god, a little lower than the angels, and yet he complains. You've made him beautiful, a reflection. You have crowned him with thought and thinking and wit, equipped him with speech and with song, and yet he complains. You have given him legs that he may walk, and arms that he may work the land and harvest. Yet still he complains. You have set him on this planet with mountains and oceans, meadows and fields. You have put all things under his feet. Sheep and cattle, wild beasts, birds and fish, trees and grain. You give him water, that he may look after them with all his skill. The sacred vase of Uruk is the oldest piece of narrative art on the planet. It was made more than 5,000 years ago in what is now southern Iraq for the temple of Inanna, queen of heaven, goddess of love, shepherdess of the land. The vase contains the story of civilization. In a sense, it is the very first film. When the gods decided that herding was too much work, they made man to look after the animals for them. Shepherding marks the beginning of our society. Keeping animals enables us to produce more than we immediately need. We can store the surplus, trade it, share it with others. If you have sheep, or any animal really, you have a responsibility. You have to find pasture and shelter for them. Make sure they don't get lost. Run after them if they do. There were different kinds of specialized herding staff in the ancient Near East. A shepherd in the field was in charge of up to 400 animals. It was an industry. A humble profession with excellent career prospects. Even King David started as a shepherd boy. He was responsible for the sheep and goats. His brothers thought that was all he was good for. Boy, were they wrong. This shepherd boy has heard about a newborn, a king. Everyone is going. So he goes, too.
Everyone has a present, but he doesn't have anything. He cannot give a sheep. The sheep isn't his. He is merely a herding boy. So he gives the only thing he can, his drumming, his singing, himself. In the ancient Near East, gods were responsible for their towns. They were the rightful shepherds of their people. The Near Eastern kings later adopted this title to show their power is given them by the gods. The Vienna Boys Choir is the inheritor of a tradition going back well over 500 years. Shepherds are sort of the earth people true heroes. They are, rightly, admired for their skill, their reliability, and their songs. When they sing, they communicate with their animals. But herding is tricky. It's a craft that has to be learned, like music. Sheep, most definitely, have a mind of their own. What now? There are strong links between shepherds and music. The Greek god of shepherds is Apollo. He is also the god of musicians and singers. Pan, 
god of the wild, of sheep and herders, is credited with the invention of the flute. Sumerian word for shepherd is sipa, literally hornblower. Horns, flutes, pipes, harps, drums. The most important instrument for a herder is his voice. Third century BP, Theocritus writes poems about shepherds. He calls them idols, literally pitchers. These poems were in fact singing competitions, antique debates. Two centuries later, Virgil writes his poems set in an idealized landscape, which he calls Arcadia. Far from being idyllic, herding sheep is a tough job. In remote locations, shepherds face their own challenges, such as crossing the open sea to find fresh pasture. Sheep hate water. To get them into a boat, there's an old herder's ruse. Sheep are equipped with excellent hearing, and they can see backwards without turning their heads. Humans have lousy hearing and need to crane their necks to see. But there is some common ground. Sheep get anxious when they cannot see their fellow sheep. In times of stress, they flock together, like humans.
the men on the Uruk vase come bearing gifts for the goddess, the fruits of the land. There are little to no natural resources in southern Mesopotamia. There is no significant rainfall. The only thing available in excess is clay. In order to survive, people must have known how to irrigate. The region's economy was based on barley, on dates, and on wool. Sheep were precious. Good herding was crucial. Escapism is not a modern invention. In the 17th and 18th centuries, members of the aristocracy would dress up as shepherds and shepherdesses, creating idyllic scenes based on romantic notions of simple country life, a semi-utopian Rococo Neverland, their understanding of Virgil's Arcadia. Nature and art, art and nature, have a complicated relationship, like theatre and reality. The world is a stage. But what is nature? And what is natural? Isn't everything humans do, by definition, art and artful? How sweet is the shepherd's sweet lot. From the morn to the evening he strays. He shall follow his sheep all the day, and his tongue shall be filled with praise. William Blake's poem adds an ironic twist to the sheep's tail. His shepherd and sheep switch sides. Sweet. Traditionally, the Maasai are cattle herders. Traditionally, they hunt lions to show their courage. Traditionally, a young Maasai had to kill a lion in order to be made a warrior, a real man. In the ancient Near East, kills by lions were considered occupational hazards. But the herdsmen had to have proof, such as the lion's tail, not exactly easy to come by. Failing that, he had to swear by the all-seeing sun god that the animal had been killed by a lion. Things are changing, have changed. Young Maasai now hunt lions with antennae and radio transmitters. They don't need to hunt lions in order to survive. On the contrary, recent research shows that there 
and our survival may depend on keeping the lions around. So the Maasai have become lion guardians. Masai manage to make a living in and from the dry savannah because they observe and listen to their surroundings. Arcadia seems not so far away in the Masai Mara, where humans live alongside the other species, and birth and death are an accepted part of the general life cycle. Some 13,000 kilometers north, we find another pastoral people. Sami herders have been living with their reindeer for 10,000 years, and their lifestyle hasn't changed. The yoik, the word describes a special kind of singing, a throaty spiritual chant, often without words, always with drums. In the past, the authorities tried to subdue the Sami by breaking their drums. But the Sami take their cues from the sky, the light or lack thereof, from snow and wind. They yoik their environment, their animals, their very selves.
Since the Neolithic, people have domesticated animals, sheep, reindeer, camels, cattle, horses. But these are not passive game pieces to whom domestication happened. They may in fact have put themselves in the path of humans. Domestication is a two-way street, a contract to which all parties must agree. It should be mutually beneficial. The biblical expression, beautiful feet, refers to a messenger bringing news of peace. The sanctuary near Mount Brandon has been around forever. Its name, Galarus, means shelter for foreigners. Extending hospitality to travelers was an unwritten rule throughout history. You never know when you might have to rely on the kindness of strangers. This is where St. Brendan started his epic voyage across the Atlantic. An angel had told him to go. Maybe Brendan was looking for Arcadia. He may have landed in America. Angels could be anywhere.
Humans are in fact fearful creatures. No horns, no claws, and woefully insufficient guts. They need reassurance and safety, like sheep. The digital rat race inspires the desire to flee, the urge to run away from it all, from the grime, the noise, the masses, to escape the city, return to the roots, find a place, a home, work with animals in unspoiled nature. Paradise? In Norway, cattle are traditionally kept in small herds and left to wander during the daytime. In the evening before night falls, the animals are called with the kulning, a cow call. Calls can mean different things, and families have their own individual calls, which the animals recognize. They come when their people call them. The calls are often combined with folk songs. This one serenades the moon as shepherd of men. Thank you. 
The moon is connected to herding in many cultures. The crescent moon has horns like cattle. The Sumerian moon god is a cattle herder. In Europe, the moon is still seen as protector, as keeper of secrets, confidant, friend. Boris Lavietz is the hometown of Martin Orpitz, a poet who lived in the 1600s. His life was beset by war and plague. He didn't know any safety. In his shepherd poems, Orpitz gives himself and his friends code names, aliases, creating a parallel world, a refuge where they would dare discuss the greater issues, politics, war, the future. This is a rather unusual lullaby, sung by the shepherds and Mary to Jesus, a haunting melody giving the infant a glimpse of his future, his ghastly fate on the cross. Yeah. 
media vita in morte sumus. In the midst of life, we are in death. How much longer will we have that luxury to be bored by a peaceful life? Everyone wants that, a place to be in peace. Doesn't everyone deserve it? Why do we fight? Why do we allow ourselves to be sent to war like lambs to the slaughter? The Good Shepherd has become the Lamb. The Arabic song Wahhabibi is a Good Friday meditation on that endless last night in the garden. My darling, my dearest, what has happened to you? Anyone with eyes to see must mourn for you and marvel at your sacrifice. My dearest, what have you done? What have they done to open a wound that will not heal? As night fell in the garden, he, the sacrifice, stood humbly before God, and the earth prayed for him who gave us a gift of prayer. The olive trees weep, and my mouth calls out to him. My darling, my dearest, how will you go? Have faith and hope vanished? In all cultures, at all times, there is this overwhelming desire for peace. Should not Arcadia be a human right? 
a birthright. From the Middle Ages, towns in the British Isles and in Europe employ a special kind of peacekeeper. In Britain, they are called wakemen or waits. In Europe, city pipers. They have a curious double function of professional musicians and city guardians. They are shepherds. The waits play drums, bagpipes, flutes. Some are particularly famous for their singing. Some traditions linger in our collective memories without ever having been written down. We are linked to the past, to our common ancestors. We are all part of the same history of our species and of our planet. God rest ye merry would have been a common greeting in Shakespeare's day, a mixture of good day and shalom or salam, basically entrusting your fellow human to the care of God the shepherd of all. Just as a lighthouse guides ships along a craggy coast, revered lakes, mountains and rocks guide the Sami herders. The Sami literally call their chilly landscape, my mother. The Aka Massif is a sacred mountain. Aka, the old lady, is the mother goddess. The mountain, a gateway between worlds, our world, the netherworld, and the world of spirits. Normally, Aka is shrouded in clouds. If she shows her face, it is considered a blessing. A yoik does not merely capture the essence of something, it is that something.
Nature and art need not be opposites. In a yoik, art is nature. The motet, Surexit Pastor Bonus, The Good Shepherd is Risen, tells a sort of mini-drama for Easter. The Good Shepherd is prepared to die for his flock and is considered worthy to be the sacrifice.
Life is not fair. That is a myth. But perhaps we can make it a little bit fairer if we share what Earth has to offer. We need to find and keep the right balance between us and every other species on the planet, right down to single-cell structures. Everything depends on each other in a natural cycle. It sounds like politics, but it is physics, nature, or art. The most famous shepherd text in the Bible has to be the 23rd Psalm. It is one of the most beautiful prayers around. Its author is David. David, the shepherd boy who wrestled with lions. David, who would become king. David, the singer. It is a private prayer sung in the first person, something every one of us can pray. God is the good shepherd in whom the singer puts his trust. Every living being, every soul goes on a journey, filled with hopes and dreams, different for everyone, and yet the same. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thank you. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shh. Listen. Music is a way to communicate directly with others, other species. Even if words and grammar fail, the intention is understood. In 1960, Valerie Jane Goodall started studying chimpanzees. Her approach was new. Goodall spent 18 years living with chimps as one of them, watching and listening. What started as research broke new ground, made a connection between species.
Bach was imagining a wise ruler, thinking of the country's happiness and welfare. Wishful thinking, maybe, but shouldn't that be the goal of politics? The Dinka are one of 62 recognized peoples in South Sudan. They are cattle people. Their entire universe revolves around cattle. On reaching adulthood, boys and girls are given their animal counterpart. They sing of it, to it, share its name. They dance the shape of its horns, almost becoming one. This life is under siege from war, drought, famine and politics. The photos of Carol Beckwith and Angela Fisher show a beauty that has already been lost. It cannot be filmed anymore. The Dinka culture is slowly disappearing. Is there a red list for peoples? Actually, despite our explosive population growth worldwide, Homo sapiens is on the IUCN red list. Some peoples are facing extinction. We may be the only animal ignorant enough to willingly engineer its own extinction by destroying our only home. We do not like to accept responsibility, certainly not when things go desperately awry. We prefer to follow a leader. Yes, we are sheep, but surely we can also be shepherds. is a metaphor for how we should treat each other and our planet with empathy and great care. It doesn't matter who or what we are, we are all guests on this planet and it is the only planet we have. was always disturbed by the use of the word dominion in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 until I learned that actually it was a wrong translation of the original Hebrew word. So now I like to imagine God and Mother Earth having a conversation. We made man and woman of course in our image. We gave this animal a special kind of body. They can walk upright. They have hands that can use and make tools. They have the ability to communicate with a spoken language and they have a powerful intellect. We made them so that they could look after the fish in the seas, the birds in the skies, the cattle, and all things that creep on the surface of the earth. We made them so that they could be the shepherds and the gardeners of this planet. And now we're wondering, after all, did we create the right animal for this job? <laughs> 